As you probably know, the Titanoboa is a giant snake that once inhabited our planet. Most people, when they hear the story, think of a dangerous predator that keeps animals away from its entire habitat. Hello, everyone. Really? Was it? And what would have happened if the Titanoboa had not become extinct? Welcome to our channel here. Now I will tell you all about it. It's about to begin. The World of Titanoboa Nothing in nature exists just and without any connection to anything else. Animal species of any kind is an inseparable part of the biome of its habitat. Only those that can survive and thrive are those that are well adapted to the conditions of the time. The Great Law of Evolution, discovered by Charles Darwin, represents the best example of the law of nature. So, in order to understand what kind of animal the Titanoboa was, we have to find out as much as we can about the conditions under which it lived. Now, Titanoboa lived about 60 million years ago, shortly after the extinction of the dinosaurs, in a time period known as the Paleocene. The bones of Titanoboa were found in Colombia, but the distribution zone was much larger, possibly extending over most of South America. Then, South America was an isolated continent, not connected to any other continent, much like Australia is today. The global winter that began after the fateful asteroid strike that had destroyed the dinosaurs abated, and a relatively warm climate prevailed on this planet. The land where Colombia now stands was then tropical, with an average annual temperature of about 35 degrees Celsius. The area was covered with jungle and was crossed by countless rivers. In short, all conditions were much the same as today. The only difference was that there was no humans, and the jungle was inhabited by a completely different group of animals. Titanoboa supposedly lived in rivers, some of them reached 14 meters in length and seemingly weighed over a ton. Among those that shared the same habitat as the Titanoboa was an aquatic Dirosauridae, similar to a crocodile with a body length of up to 6 meters. Titanoboa may also have often encountered the same species of tortoises now extinct. For example, the Carbonemis whose carapace is over 1.5 meters long. Titanoboa was first thought to be the top predator that ruled the food chain, attacking and eating all other animals, including those just mentioned. Also according to this theory, birds and mammals that inadvertently approached the water were prey to the Titanoboa. The most widely distributed mammals in South America throughout most of the Cenozoic era were the Notto ungulata. Notto ungulata varied in appearance, but the most representative of the Titanoboa period was the Thomas Shucks Leia, a 1.5 meter herbivore that was somewhere between a dog and a wild boar. The kings of birds in South America were the flightless birds of the forest Rachidae, ranging from huge ones several meters long to small ones less than a meter long. Stated differently, there was no shortage of prey for the Titanoboa. This theory, however, has been proven wrong by the latest research. When researchers examined the skull of the Titanoboa, they found that its main prey was fish. So, with the exception of fish, none in the habitat of the creatures mentioned earlier had to fear the Titanoboa. On the other hand, it was obviously foolish to attack this giant snake. So, Titanoboa apparently did not need to fear other predators either. Why did the Titanoboa become extinct? Titanoboa as a species existed for only a short period of time, about 2 million years. Titanoboa adapted to most of the peak warming period, 
which occurred several times between 60 and 58 million years ago due to the release of methane into the atmosphere. After that, cooling began. Of course, it was far from cold enough to kill off the dinosaurs and not nearly as cold as the ice ages that humans experienced. But it was just fatal to animals that preferred hot climates. Another problem has to do with the release of methane, which we just mentioned. When methane was released, the atmosphere warmed and the environment on Earth became suitable for the Titanoboa. But that was not the end of the story. In the North Atlantic, methane compounds were released over and over again. And these conditions continued for about 2,500 years, causing the seawater to become acidic and creating large areas of anoxia. Many sulfate-reducing bacteria, which produce hydrogen sulfide, appeared. At the height of this process, about 10 to 20% of the world's oceans were inhabited only by anaerobic organisms, as is the case today in the Deep Black Sea. Such waters were essentially just near the coastlines of the continents. As a result, fish numbers declined. Really, fish could no longer live anywhere. Then, there was no more food for the Titanoboa. Of course, the Titanoboa lived in rivers, not in the sea, but we must not forget that many fish live in freshwater but migrate to the open sea to spawn. The saltwater areas suitable for growth have decreased and they can no longer migrate. The two factors seem to have contributed to the extinction of the Titanoboa, colder temperatures and the expansion of hydrogen sulfide rich waters. The present species of snake, called the boa or anaconda, are smaller than the Titanoboa and emerged much later. But what would have happened if the Titanoboa had survived these adverse conditions? To be honest, even if it had survived, Titanoboa would have had a whole new set of problems ahead of it. There were many natural cataclysms during the subsequent 60 million years, but perhaps even those were not the greatest threat, but rather another problem facing it. As we have already explained, throughout almost all of the Cenozoic era, the South American continent was surrounded on all sides by ocean like the Australian continent is today, and there was a unique faunal expanse there that could not be found anywhere else. This included, you know, the forest Rackaday and the Natongulata. The South American continent began to be connected to the North and Central America only 15 million years ago, and the land bridges between the continents were not built until about 3 million years ago. As a result, many animals began invading the land from North America to South America. Both birds of the forest Rackaday and animals of the Noto Ungulata were unable to survive the competition and perished in a relatively short time. Other species also suffered. For the Titanoboa too, a difficult situation arose. For example, fish from the north, which the Titanoboa cannot eat, may have displaced the freshwater fish that the Titanoboa fed on, and new plant species may have altered the chemical composition of the soil and as a result, components of water. Incidentally, judging from current range of their habitat, the existing boa family of snakes, a distant relative of the Titanoboa, originated in South America and then spread further into Central America along the newly created bridge then perhaps the land connection was not a bad thing for the Titanoboa. What if the Titanoboa had not become extinct? How would the animal kingdom have changed if Titanoboa had survived? No wonder they are not so strong anymore. Other snakes of the boa family probably would not have evolved into what they are today. Because the Titanoboa would have taken over their ecological status. Titanoboa would have remained the only species of serpent of its kind. After the Americas became landlocked, the surviving Titanoboa may have begun migrating to secure new territories. By now, 
the Titanoboa's home range may have extended to the Mexico-US border. Because the jungle has remained essentially unchanged for tens of millions of years, it would have provided a very comfortable habitat for the Titanoboa. Titanoboa were not so dangerous to humans. We humans are not tasty to them. Please, have some fish. But be careful about swimming in their habitat. Fast moving movements may be considered by Titanoboa an attack on it, and it may attack swimmers in self-defense. Also, humans may have been capturing Titanoboa for their meat and skin, and genuine leather Titanoboa bags may have been prized by now. Now we are done with this video. Thank you all for watching. We hope you liked this video. Are you glad there are no Titanoboa on Earth right now? Or do you wish we had Titanoboa? Please let us know. Your comments are always a pleasure to read. Please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends on social networking sites. Then, please give us a like too. See you next time. Bye!